Hi, this is Paul Bauer, and welcome to How to Regenerate and Restore Your Mind and Your Body. All right. So, a little primer about uh, why I'm doing this um, and why this is so fascinating and so interesting and so inspiring to me. And uh, those of some of you that might remember my story with my hips, with the uh, degeneration story uh, that happened not 10 years ago, not even five years ago. It happened, this is after my wife passed away. Uh, but not even right away. It took about a year or so, and it just it it just went kind of kooky and crazy. Long story short, without going into that long-winded story um, of the ups and downs and the peaks and valleys, I discovered that at the core of it was an emotional issue. Of course, you can imagine the emotion of of your life partner flying over the moon in her words, you know, when she left the planet, at least in terms of her three third dimensional body so and her name is susan susan castle bless her soul bless her heart she's with us today because she's in my heart and many of you that either met her heard her saw her felt read etc she's in our hearts as well and the uh the 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 trauma that happened uh, was not uh, felt all right away because, you know, sometimes we feel overwhelmed. Uh, it's too much, right? So the body takes it into what's called cellular, cellular memory. And the challenge with cellular memory is um, it goes in at some point, right, into your mind body. And it stores itself into the cellular network from your nose down to your toes, all right? It's not just in the back of your quote unquote subconscious mind because as as the famous uh, subconscious mind and neurotransmitter researcher, Candace Pert used to talk about, your body is your subconscious. Think about it that way. And we're gonna get into this in this presentation and some of the whys and, and, and why the body stores it, why does it hold onto it and how can you release it so that you can regenerate and restore your mind and body. Okay, so here's a question. Have you ever noticed why and how some 70 and 80 year olds are in better shape than many who are half their age. I'm sure you've seen a report, you've seen a, a marathon, you see 70 and 80 year olds pass, you know, to get into the, the uh, finish line. Um, and uh, you're, you're thinking to yourself, wow, when I was in Hawaii watching the Ironman, I used to see people that were twice my age crossing the finish line. And I thought to myself, how the heck do they do this? Amazing. Now, so what keeps them young? And there's this man, his name is Canio Pelosa. He is, uh, well, we're going to wait for a moment to tell you how old he is. So he finished first in a one mile race. All right. He's definitely older than me and you. So the next thing is he's actually 93 years old, 93 years old. He finished first in a one mile race where now he wasn't walking. He was running. Interesting. Now, this young lady, her name is Florence Baron, is 84 years old. She finished first and set the record for the 80-year-old bracket. Interesting. So if you're like me and you see someone of this age or greater do something of that achievement, it's not just about achievement, it's what they were able to do. What do you say to yourself? Do you say to yourself like, oh, that's just something they're, they're different? Or, wow, if they can do it? Maybe I can do it. Maybe not running a race. Maybe that may not be your marathon. Maybe it's more so like, maybe I can get over this issue that I'm experiencing in my mind body. I hope that you feel that. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be listening to this seminar tonight or watching it as a video. So maybe it's time that we redefine aging. Yeah, what is it? That's my question to you right now. What does aging mean? We're going to look at it this from different perspectives, all right? Think about it. Close your eyes for a minute. What does aging mean to you? First thing that comes to you, you know, if, you've taken, if you're taking notes, write down your response from your subconscious, because that's the first thing that comes is subconsciously. How do you define this thing called aging? And what's your level of happiness today relative to how old you are? Are you happy at the age that you're at? And by the way, if you're 20 and you're listening to this or 30, we're not, we're not talking to just an audience that's, let's say, above 50. 
or 60. We're talking to anybody, and you'll see why in just a moment, of a survey that was run, that the concept of aging affects literally everyone. Mm, interesting. Now, your emotional balance is a key to how you think and how you feel and how you perceive and how your body encodes what aging is. I once met a young lady and she was flirting with me. This was just a couple of years ago. And she was like half my age. And I said that to her. I said, well, you know, you're kind of half my age. She looks at me and she goes, Paul, she goes, you're, you know what I'm going to say? Age is just a number. She meant it. I was flattered, of course. I mean, I was clearly old enough to be her father. And as I drove away that day, I had this big smile on my face. Did I feel young? Absolutely. You know, it's like being carted at a store. And I thought to myself, she's right. Wow. So here's a question to you that I heard many, many years ago. If you didn't know how old you are, how old would you be? Think about that. Write that down. Usually that brings a smile to people if they're not already way advanced in terms of their age, internal age, I'm talking about, right? It's kind of an inspiring question. And your physical activity is important in this, and we're going to get into this as we go. So a recent survey, this is what I was alluding to before, asked this question. Assume for a moment that there was a pill that could slow down aging and maintain your health longer. How likely would you be to take that pill? Now, before I reveal the results of that survey, think about it for yourself. Would you? Okay. And it might be counterintuitive to consider who also answered this. Like, what were the age groups? Check this out. From 18-year-olds all the way up to 80-plus-year-olds, they virtually all answered the same response. Over 80% of them said, yes, I would take that pill. Now, when I saw this survey, I thought to myself, wait, why would an 18 or a 25-year-old or a 30-year-old be concerned about aging? Now, you could say, well, well, the other part of the question was about maintaining your health longer, right? Well, unless something was not right with your health, maybe there's something inside of us that thinks that aging may not be so good, perhaps. Well, maybe aging isn't the problem. Maybe aging is something that people have misunderstood for quite some time and that we encode it in terms of something that is fearful, something that we are avoiding, something that we're trying to push away. Mm, interesting. Now, studies have been made that people who have the fear of aging or they want to push it away, actually age faster. Now, you're, you're fully aware that age brings wisdom to you. You know, it's like, yeah, you're, the, you're the, the adult in the room, so to speak, right? But it also brings other things that you didn't know about yourself that your soul is ready to experience and to release and to then allow yourself to be part of, connected to, feeling uh, as one with. It all comes down to how you feel about what aging is. So like that, like that survey that was done with the, all the way from 18 year olds, all the way up to 80 plus year olds, think of it if you're 18 or 20 or 25, what happens if a person doesn't enjoy their life? What happens if they have fear? What happens if they have dismay, depression, anger, whatever the, the lower vibrations might be? Do you think that would age them faster or set them up for diseases down the road that are look like they're aging based but it's not age that's causing them it's the energy on the inside that that is now from one of my most favorite movies and i won't tell you who this character is yet so you don't predispose who this person was this this character said someone once told me that time was a predator that stalked us all our lives and he said but i'd rather believe that time is a companion who goes with us on the journey and reminds us to cherish every moment because they'll never come again. Love that quote. And what we leave behind is not as important as how we lived. Who was that character? Jean-Luc Picard in the movie called, I think it was called Insurrection. It was all about the nexus and how the character uh, that he was playing opposite of uh, was concerned about capturing this this timeless energy from the nexus that would help him live forever. You know, the, the fight for immortality. The fight for immortality 
or in other words, the desire for immortality is the fear of aging. Honestly, do you want to be immortal or do you, you want to have high quality of life? That's your choice. We won't judge whether you believe either one. The key is to understand that believing that time is a companion who goes with us on the journey and reminds us to cherish every moment, that's living in the present moment. And that is an art. And that is one of the keys to being um, happy, no matter how old we are. Now, let's move on to one of my most favorite things. Those of you that have ever seen a picture of this, you might recognize what this is. It's called the powerhouse of the cell, but its real name is your mitochondria. This is the source of energy in all our mind and bodies. Every cell in your body is made up of mitochondria. Billions and trillions of them that create energy, known as ATP, without getting into the science, that energy is what drives you. It gives you the reserves. It gives you the ability to move forward in life. It gets drained once in a while, but it's there all the time. And it's the key driver of cell survival. From some of my research with some pretty cool teachers, they also have called it the light of the cell. There's something that is highly connected to this beautiful light that enters into this human body by way of the mitochondria. And in that light is your connection to the oneness, to the infinite, to God. So why are mitochondria so important? Because number one, they're responsible for all the energy that you have in your life. If you didn't have mitochondria, you wouldn't be alive. Your body wouldn't be animated. It, it wouldn't have life force flowing through it. So think of it in these terms. If you see that picture, that picture represents the light, the energy that is in every cell. And there's not just billions, there's trillions of them in our bodies. And they're running in the background all the time. If you ever feel really, really tired, that means that your mitochondria are starting to turn their attention towards creating energy and focusing it on something that's more important going on in your mind and your body. We'll get into that in a few moments. When they're optimal, you have optimal health and energy. Now, there's also something really cool about your mitochondria, and that is their energy sensors. They're always looking and watching. It's like they've got antennas and early warning systems. And the question it asks your mitochondria is, is it safe to produce energy now? to create it for the, your other activities, the other things that you need to go throughout your life and your day. If it's not safe, it goes into cellular defense mode. It's like a fight or flight within the mitochondria, if you think of it in those terms. So this is interesting. So your mitochondria is brilliant. It is protecting you energetically. So if some pathogen, some issue begins to affect your immune system or your organs, and those pathogens, whether they be viruses like COVID, bacteria, et cetera, when they start entering into your system or affecting your energy field, what happens is your mitochondria moves its attention away from producing energy on the outside of your body. In other words, movement and working out and, and moving forward in your day. And it focuses on these internal systems of your body that you need in order to maintain your life. They are the life force within you, right? Countable, measurable and now visible. So there's something that's called mitochondrial dysfunction. Maybe you've heard of it. You've heard some doctors talk about it, but what is it? It's what happens when there's stress that builds up and not just normal stress, but I mean large amounts of stress. And then when you have lack of sleep or lack of exercise, you're taking drugs of any kind, whether that be pharmaceutical, recreational, are there others? I guess. Those factors have a tendency to create a dysfunction, a drain in your energy of your mitochondria. Why is this important? Because whatever you're feeling today, if it's other than optimal, at some level, there's something that is taking energy down within your mitochondria, the life force within you. Let's say you practice energy work. Let's say that you do all the great stuff, but you still feel not quite right. Hmm. Maybe your body is trying to get attention or your attention. So you'll listen to it. And we're going to touch on that more. So what are some of the symptoms of mitochondrial dysfunction? Low energy and fatigue is the first one. That's the one you really start noticing it going, oh, wow. Now your body's trying to get your attention at this point. Some people keep on moving past that because of their jobs, their families, traumas, whatever it might be. No judgment. 
But the other symptoms are the big diseases, the heart disease, cancer, arthritis, diabetes, obesity. And your mitochondria over time, here's one interesting study that shows that every 10 years, your mitochondrial production drops 10%. Every 10 years, you do the math, right? So by the time you're 60, most people, I'm using that open-ended, most people lose over 60% of their mitochondrial capacity, which means your life force is lower, you're more susceptible to things in your environment, you don't have that bounce back energy, you don't have the ability to restore and regenerate. Interesting. Yeah, maybe we're at the edge now, the edge, in other words, of our learning, that we'll start listening to our bodies again, because your symptoms are the direction, are the they're like the messages that are asking for us to pay attention. So there's good news. So this is not all to be, you know, like bad news bears type of stuff. You can restore your mitochondria, no matter how old you are. You could be in your 90s, moving on 100, and you could still restore your mitochondria. Now, vitamins or supplements, they can help, but they won't address the cause of what drains your mitochondria. So you can take all sorts of things like ubiquinol, not CoQ10 if you're over 50, by the way. Ubiquinol is the better version of that. Uh, PQQ, and there's just a number of supplements that you can take, right? But without addressing what's underneath it and drawing or draining your mitochondria, you won't get to the cause. You have to discover what's draining your energy and heal it. So when you do the steps that normal people would do, you and me, we would normally say, okay, I've read things about mitochondria. I looked at that article the other day. They said exercise will help restore your mitochondria. Cool. Proper sleep. Yes. Fasting. Melatonin, which is one of the keys to helping restore. But by themselves, they are, we're only working at the physical level. So let's take, let's go a little deeper. Let's switch over to something that is just as important as your mitochondria. And that is a thing called your telomeres. If you look at this cool picture here of this is a gene and those green end caps of the gene are your telomeres. Your telomeres are the key, one of the key markers of aging, along with things like HRV. We've talked about that in other videos, heart rate variability. Now, your telomeres are this interesting, cool kind of thing that helps your cells every time they replicate become as close to the original as possible. But as, as you age, as we all age, that replication just loses a little bit each time. And I'm gonna show you something as we go here. The telomeres shorten the older we get, but there are proven ways to lengthen them and also restore your energy and your youth. Now, here's a helpful metaphor. Think of shoelaces when you think of telomeres. And you can see that kind of like frayed version of that shoelace on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side of that picture is like a perfectly shaped shoelace end. So the frayed edge is the aging effect. That's when you lose telomerase, which is the enzyme, and your telomeres begin to diminish over time. And the thing that wears them away most is stress, but there are numbers of stressors in our lives. And any of you that have been through any type of trauma, any type of issue, like loss of someone in your life, loss of a, of a job that you worked at for some time, loss of income, loss has a tendency to affect us and stress us at very deep levels, not standard stress, not, okay, the news of the day, big events. COVID was a major event that stressed literally everyone across humanity at some level. So the next step to understand is, the secrets of your telomeres. And the first one is the less stress you have, the longer your telomeres. Okay, you'd say, well, that's kind of like, that's totally intuitive, Paul. Right, yeah. And, and yet, why can't we control our stress most of the time, or at least times when you wish you could? Hmm. So the more compassion you have for others, this is something that I read in a study just recently. The longer you live, the longer your telomeres. That's what they're noticing in people that reach in their 80s, 90s, and become centenarians, is that they're compassionate. They love life. They enjoy life. There's happiness. They've got it kind of like mastered. They've got life down. So their telomerase is 
in some cases, better than someone who's in their 40s or 50s. Interesting. So if you remember the pictures that I showed you at the beginning of the two people that won those races, how do you think their telomeres look? How do you think their mitochondria look? They're well past 80, and yet they act and feel younger than people that are often in their 30s, 40s, or 50s. This is cool. This is practical. This is not just some kind of a, a concept that we're talking about here. Now, let's look at something that when I first did the research on this, I thought, whoa, it's a little bit daunting when you first see it. Over time, from when you're 20 years old, you've got about 10,000 base pairs of telomeres. By the time you're 60, you lose half of them. And when you get into your 80s and 100 level, you've lost, you know, probably 60, 70, 80% of them. Hmm. But they can be restored. So this is the average person in our society who, and the experience they have with their telomeres. Now, here's something kind of cool. Um, in my research, I found out that there is a feedback loop between your telomeres and you and what you're thinking and what you're feeling. They absorb the instructions you give them. They're listening all the time. They're antennas. They're very intelligent. It's not just the food you eat, which is important, of course, or what you consume in terms of beverages, water, what type of water. If it's filtered water, that is going to deplete your life force. If it's tap water, I meant to say, if it's just your standard tap water, it's depleting your life force with the chemicals that are in that water. If you filter your water, that's the next best step. If you add some minerals, or other forms of atomization or energy enhancement to your water, you're going to enhance the energy that goes into your body, your mitochondria, your telomeres. So it's the emotions you feel are another huge thing that your telomeres pick up. Remember, they're like antennas. They're listening. They're, they're the opposite of a broadcasting system. Your thoughts and your emotions are the broadcasting system. They are the receivers. They're the receptors of what's going on in your thoughts and your feelings. So exercise is also really important um, or how little or how much that you do it. If you over-exercise, you know, like if you're a, an achiever, a bodybuilder, uh, a performance athlete of any kind, then you're pushing too hard. It's actually going to drop some of the energy of your telomeres. If you don't exercise enough, it would also take away from your telomere energy. Hopefully, you have some perfect balance between just enough activity where you get out of your chair or you're moving or you bike or you walk or you connect with nature or whatever you do in order to get that blood flow cooking and moving in your life, no matter how old you are. Now, you might remember this graph from a previous video that we did, and I'm not repeating it to, to like make things worse. What I'm trying to bring it to our attention is, is that this is the supposed rate of decline of our energy and the capacity that we have in our bodies. So you can see that at the top of that peak is, is you're into early adulthood. And then as time goes on, mid-adulthood and old age, you lose some of that capacity. You lose some of that energy as time goes on. Now, one more graph, and then we're going to talk some pretty cool stuff. This is a graph, this hockey stick graph, that by age 50, 60, you see that the major diseases and the amount of deaths that happen heart disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease, stroke, all increased dramatically in the late 50s and 60s. And these are all related to mitochondrial dysfunction. In other words, not enough energy in the body and loss of telomeres. So the good news is, and this is what you've been waiting for, right? Is that you can turn back the hands of time. This is not a concept. This is not um, a wishing this is not like, oh, maybe it could happen someday. No, no. This is based on science. This is based on the combination of factors that I'll share some with you tonight. You can rejuvenate your telomeres and your, mitochond and your mitochondria. There is no question about that. So here's one more cool thing before we start moving into like a conclusion here. Your youth hormone is your growth hormone, right? I read a recent study by a Dr. William Seeds, who's an expert at peptides and youthification. That's a word, you know, that I like to kind of throw out there. And the study showed that centenarians have the same growth hormone in their pituitary as a 20 year old. Okay. Think of that. Honestly, stop for a second. A 100 year old person has the same growth hormone in their pituitary gland as a 20 year old. 
wait, how is that even possible? I thought that as you aged, we thought as you age, just like those graphs show, that your life force, your all of the stuff in the body stops working like it used to. Well, hmm, if, the, if that growth hormone is in your pituitary gland, still at 100 years old, then what does that tell us? That something has happened down line from those glands, you know, the many glands that you have, pituitary, hypothalamus, pineal gland, et cetera. Hmm. Maybe what's happened in the in between, on the highway between those, something isn't quite right. Maybe there's something that's being gummed up. Maybe the energy transfer isn't quite right. Hmm. But this one blew me away. I'm like, wow. Because um, in part of my recovery, I had to look at things like testosterone and growth hormones, stuff like that. And I'm not talking about external growth hormone. There is no need to take that. In fact, it's counterindicated. It can make things worse. Why would you take an external source of something in this situation, especially when your body produces it naturally. Whoa. So we want to do those things that instill or, or, or hmm, what's another word that inspire the body to do what it does normally. Wow. How cool. Yeah. This stuff just fascinates me. So what's the key? Maybe the key is learning how to turn it back on again, naturally. I'm not talking about any particular substance, although there are things like peptides that you can use, right? But maybe there are other methods. Maybe there's other techniques that are simpler, less expensive, because when you get into peptides and bioregulators and all that sort of stuff and growth hacking and biohacking, it can cost you more than hundreds of dollars a month. So maybe there's a simpler way. And I'm into a simpler way. How about you? So let's talk about this factoring that we talked about before called aging. What causes it? Stress is the number one factor. No question about it. Not just normal stress, habitual stress. Stress over time, long periods of time, chronic stress, the kind that kicks in fight or flight. Those of you that ever watched any of the presentations I've done on HRV, serenity, your heart resonance, et cetera, the fight or flight thing kicks in that cortisol. And instead of it being temporary, the cortisol kicks in and stays on, keeps staying on, drains the energy from your adrenal glands. That's what's creating your cortisol. That's okay to have there, but it's not meant to be on for long periods of time or habitual. So it drains your adrenal energy. So then some people take coffee and other substances to boost it unnaturally. And then what happens is, is that aging starts kicking in in the background and people start asking themselves, why am, where's my energy? If there's one thing I could solve right now, Paul, it would be that I'd get more energy because if I have more energy, oh, I could do pretty much anything. Yeah. So think of what we talked about before. Your mitochondria is affected by everything you think, everything you feel, everything you take into your body, who you surround yourself with. And there's a half a dozen other factors that come in. Poor diet and nutrition is a big piece in what happens in most people's um, energy their aging issues, et cetera. But let's say that you've done the right things. You've got the right diet. You've got organic foods. You've got nutrients that you add to your, to your diet and you still feel low energy or something isn't quite right. We're going to talk more about that. Or there might be a lack of exercise. That's one of the other key causes of aging. One last one is poor sleep. Sleep upsets your circadian rhythm, upsets the pineal gland, upsets the secretion of melatonin when you fall asleep at night. This is... That subject right there, we could focus a whole video on just that. And we're going to do that in something that I will tell you later. Hmm. So when you optimize your sleep, when you get enough sleep and quality sleep, you regulate what's happening in the mind and the body. The melatonin secretes itself from your pineal gland, which is one of the most important and misunderstood and little known glands in your entire body. When that gland is working properly, then it's sending out the melatonin into your, your stream of body biochemicals, especially when you sleep at night, it then speaks through what's called your CSF. It's the cerebral spinal fluid. And what that then does is it bathes your cells, bathes your mitochondria, it bathes every cell in melatonin, which is one of the highest antioxidants known to man. Can you take, a, can you take melatonin as a supplement to help you? Sure. And you can also do something on the inside, which we'll talk about, to help promote that natural melatonin release 
which wonderful sleep can help you do. So you've heard me talk about these three levels of healing before. I'm not leaving one important one out. I'm combining it in the first one. And that is physical. All right. That's the first level of healing. That's what most people focus on. And it's good, but it's not complete in any way. The next level of healing is the emotional level. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is where the energy either gets stuck or moves. If you know how to release, if you practice present moment awareness, if you meditate, if you know how to do emotional clearing for yourself, if you're okay, even when the blank hits the fan in your life, that means that it doesn't stay in your emotional body. And the third level that I think is equally as important as the emotional level, and that is the energetic level. And I'll describe to you a little bit more about what this means. When you've got these three working together, in a triad, in, a, in harmony, what you're going to get is, is, a, is a synergy that helps you the most. Now, the biggest shifts that I've seen in my experience for my own self and people that I work with and people that I've studied you know, for a long period of time are at the emotional and the energetic levels. And the reason why is because this is the, these are the levels that create the physical. So what do I mean? By energetic consciousness what is that what does consciousness mean well it's something having to do with your soul it has something to do with what what runs the machine there's an old quote by rick jero author of a book called grading the work you love and it says we may be driven but we do not know who or what is driving us hmm. yeah what's running me what, what drives my thoughts my emotions my behaviors that's deeper than that physical stuff. And it's great to start with physical because that's what's going to get your attention. But the more you pay attention to these deeper levels, then you start experiencing a completely different level of wholeness. That's what I am really mean is consciousness and soul and wholeness by the term energetic. Not just energy, but the things that are who you are at the deepest level beyond your personality, beyond your identities that you've played in life. And anything that you've experienced in life, beneath all that is the soul and the essence of who you are. When you combine all these together, physical, emotional, and energetic, you experience optimal health and longevity. And this is honestly, isn't this what we're all looking for? That synergy, that triad of, of physical, emotional, and energetic experience of feeling whole and complete. Now, something that just came to me a couple of days ago, that's a little oversimplified, but I think it's helpful to understand this. The bottom circle is something that most people aren't aware of. And yet when you're trying to expand, you're trying to grow, when you're trying to grow into the new you, the old you is what's hanging on. And it's, it tends to drag us back. If we want to heal, if we want love in our life, if we want to feel whole, if you want to feel complete, whatever it is you really want most in your life, hopefully it's not just materialistic because when that fails, when that fades away, who are you when the material goes away? Whether that be a person, money, possessions, and the enough stuff, right? The old you has served you up to a certain point, but it's not going to take you to the next level. The new you, this is the eternal you. This is the you that you came here to remember, re-experience, and experience the wholeness. The new you is what's guiding you forward. It's what got you to listen to this video tonight. It's what got me to produce this video. It's what, it's what animates me. Is the, it, it is my guiding light. You could call it God. You could call it, you know, like um, any number of, of words. The key is, is that we understand which do you want most. The old you that has a tendency to remember these old memories that drain energy because the old you has emotions. It has history. It has traumas. It's got the old identities. All the stuff that you really don't need and want to release is caught up in the old you. The new you, the real you, the essence of who you are is what you are moving towards. And this is, and that part of you is going to what is what's going to revitalize your mind and your body. So I want you to just kind of think about that for a moment. Like, close your eyes just for a moment. I want you to feel 
for just a few moments. Feel where you are. Tune into your body. Take a couple nice, slow, deep breaths. And what do you feel? What are you noticing about yourself? Is there something that's dragging your energy down or do you feel inspired? Are you wondering about the problems of yesterday going into tomorrow? Or are you longing life is going to not pass you by? The new you is what's guiding you. The new you is what will help you revitalize your mind and your body. The old you is what I invite you to release and let go. The old you is not going to carry you to the next shore in your life. It's not going to revitalize you. The new you is the restored you, is the revitalized you. And I invite you to experience that. And so here's some kind of cool news. Um, I've created, and I'm in the midst of creating, a new program called Regenerate and Restore. What it's about is helping you remember how to connect to this new you. It's an ongoing membership club where you learn and practice the best ways to optimize and restore your health and vitality. It's based on the 30 years, actually more like 40 or 50 years in my life of the things that I've learned. And especially when my hip issue came in, what I had to remember how to do and let go of, and man, the emotions were deep, folks. I mean, that was the thing that really hit me the hardest that I had to release. And once I did, that new me just came out just naturally. And I'm out the other side of it. And I hope that you understand that when we are given something, that we are supposed to share it. And that's what I'm here to do is to share with you how I did this, not just my method, but the best methods combined into one, simplified, and I would say fairly inexpensively. So here's what you get with the Regenerate and Restore Club. First of all, what I call the core meditation process. It's a practice that you can do by yourself. And there's also another way that I'll share with you in a few moments that is an absolute game changer. This is not a normal meditation method. This is something that literally starts turning on and revamping your whole energy system in a way that will blow your mind. And that's a really good way to say it because our old mind is not going to get us to where we want to do or want to be in our lives. You know, the new you is brought about through things like this core meditation process. You also get what's called the release process, which helps with this emotional piece, which is so incredibly difficult for most of us, especially if it's a trauma, if it's an old issue that's in your family system, which is where most of the stuff hangs out. If you've got job issues, income issues, health issues, whatever that issue might be, the release process helps you unwind it from your mind, from your emotional body, from your physical body, from your karma. That's hugely important because in many cases, when I work with clients, I we find, we discover that what's bothering them isn't happening because of their self today. It's something that preceded them even in this lifetime. Whether you believe in that or, or not isn't the important part. The, the key is, is that you understand, that we all understand, that we sometimes carry things with us that are hereditary, that are not exactly um, our issue it could be our ancestors issue, but it's still in our DNA and our genes. So the release process helps you release that from your mind, body, energy field. So the next thing is not just the, the serenity breath that many of you have tried, practiced, et cetera, but there's a level two version of that. Something that I practice literally every day. I almost don't get stressed anymore. I mean, it's not like I'm completely impervious, but what used to bother me, it just no longer does. And that is primarily due to the serenity breath process. I started practicing it in dilig with diligence about two years ago. Then I started teaching it to people. They started getting it. Then I realized there was another level of it because it doesn't matter if it's trauma. It doesn't matter if it's deep emotional wounds. It doesn't matter if it's physical issues. The serenity breath process, it just regulates the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems in a way that nothing else that I've ever tried does. And it's measurable, measurable through you guessed it, HRV, heart rate variability, through serenity, serenity HRS, heart resonance score is what that stands for. So um, 
you also get something that honestly I feel like just this is just a, like the coup de grace um weekly group meditation sessions and why this is so important is because you can practice this core meditation process on your own and I think you're going to get some pretty amazing benefits but those benefits they dramatically are enhanced when you practice them in a group with our group in our regenerate and restore program it through what's called the synergy effect it's not one plus one equals three it's like there's a factorial to it there's an exponential or a logarithmic thing that happens when we start practicing as a group when we're together as a group so you know this for yourself if you've ever been to a seminar it's so different than if you sat in a room and you read that same material. If you go to the seminar, there's people sitting with you. You're focused. Everyone is focused on that one thing that they're learning. If it's meditation, your meditation skills get not dramatically better. I think it's bigger than that. I think that I've, I've experienced that my meditation skills or my understandings of whatever things that I've learned in person and done with group have taken them, taken me and my fellow students to completely new levels. And I'll share, I would love to share stories with you, but I want to keep this brief tonight. So when we connect and practice with an inspired group of people, keywords there are practice and inspire, I'm sorry, inspired, connect and practice. The real key there is, is that when we all come together, that's the first factor, and you're inspired, that means our hearts are open, your energy is just like it's as big as the room you take on different levels of your capacity you release patterns that honestly on your own you couldn't do so each week we're going to have these group meditation sessions where we do the core meditation process and frankly you will leave with a smile on your face and in your heart you'll sleep better on those nights you'll wake up the next day with more energy i can promise you this when we do this together You'll also, um, every time we meet as a group, um, it's going to help you increase the clarity that I just talked about, but your life force energy every time we get together as a group. So how much time does this take? It can take as little as 30 minutes. It's not like two hours. Once a week, that'll help kind of jumpstart you to do it on your own. But every week when we come back together again, the whole group is getting stronger and stronger. Just so cool. Every week the stronger we become. So there's a little bit more. One of my favorite things um, is that we'll, every week you can ask questions and we can all come together or you can take the recordings to learn how to awaken the healer within you. So we're going to have Q&A calls every week, either on a Thursday or a Friday, depending on the time of the year, where you can ask any questions of what you're learning whatever that you're, you're challenged with, whatever that you're in the process of releasing, and we'll learn together. I'm also going to give you my top 10 supplement list of how to increase your mitochondrial energy and energy in general. So this adds to the formula that we talked about before, not just physical, but the emotional and the energetic. And also my powerful cleansing and renewal program of how to clear you know, the stuff that collects in your body. Because if you want to get more energy, if you want your mitochondria to turn on, if you want to lengthen your telomeres, you've got to have some kind of a cleansing and, and renewal program in your body. So I call it regenerate and restore. Now, I got one more cool thing. I think this is a game changer. This is what came to me a little over a year ago when my hips were like well into the healing phase. And i had been doing a lot of research into PRP and stem cells. And, and I, I listened to two researchers and they said something that was absolutely outstanding. You're going to notice a theme here. It has to do with your mitochondria. It has to do with your telomeres that you can restore them. There's one more thing that's, that you have the capacity to restore. And it's your stem cells. So... And a centenarian still has the same amount of stem cells as a young person does. The problem is they go senescent. They go dormant. They're latent. They're not activated. So there's a process that I, for, for better, better words, it would be that it was just downloaded to me because I was just tuned in one day and it just kind of spoke to me in a meditation. And now I do it for myself to activate my own stem cells. And why is this important? Why are stem cells important? Because they are the things that can create 
and actuate and, and turn on other cells in the body. So if you need a healing of any kind, if your energy has dropped, if you're in the middle of a disease state of any kind, dis-ease, your stem cell activity has dropped dramatically. It's a natural thing, just like those graphs that I showed you before. This process, the stem cell activation process, helps increase your mitochondrial activity, your telomere activity, and your stem cells to the point where the body starts healing itself in a way that it wasn't doing otherwise. This is so absolutely, I don't think words can fully describe how amazing this is in the time that we live in now. Because up until just recently, we were told that your stem cells just diminish over time and you can't do anything about it. That's standard Western medicine junk. I don't believe it. And I'm glad that I studied with these two stem cell experts that said, you've got enough of them right now. If you've got a wound, if you've got a bad hip or a, a bad knee or and you've been to some stem cell expert and they quoted you, you know it's at least $5,000. Some are more than 10 grand. And honestly, based on the research that I've done and my own experience, you don't need the external stem cells like we once believed. It doesn't mean you shouldn't get them. It doesn't mean that they can't help you. But why go out of your way? Because these are all cash paid. These are elective. They're not covered by insurance techniques to do that stem cell increase when you can do it within yourself. Is it easy? Honestly, no, I don't think it's the easiest thing in the world. It's a process that we learn. And it's part of the new self that I've been talking about. So that's, it's not really just a bonus. It's a gift. Um, it's a gift that's been given to me that I'm supposed to give to you. And so that brings it all together. Um, that's what the Regenerate and Restore program is about those seven or eight factors and the stem cell activation process just kind of like brings it all together. That's what we came together tonight to talk about, not just the program itself, but the ability that you know deep inside, that's what led you to be on our call tonight or to listen to this video, that you can restore, regenerate, revitalize, reactivate, and re-experience what the life force is within you. It's been a pleasure to serve you. And Look forward to talking to you more.